Yes, everyone has joined. So now I'll be starting the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Tamasoma Jyotir Gameya. A very good morning to all of you. And welcome all of you for the fourth clinical meeting of Pune Ophthalmological Society. I'm Dr. Ruchita Machwe, Secretary Pune Ophthalmological Society. And we have got an array of interesting cases which will be presented by the postgraduate students of various institutes, ophthalmic institutes in Pune. So let's get started. And I request our president, Dr. Sanjay Tekode, sir, to please take the reins in, a, in his hands. Over to Dr. Tekode, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Runita. Uh, friends, as usual, uh, clinical meetings have been the flagship of our uh, academic uh, activities all throughout the year. And uh, this is one program which uh, is very much appreciated. And the participation has been very good. The cases presented are of very high standards and they have been very helpful to all of us. So uh, I wish all the presenters good luck. And I now uh, request uh, Devika uh, to uh, start the session. Devika. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. So this is our fourth clinical meeting and we have interesting cases lined up today. Uh, before that, I would like to introduce our judges and our chairpersons today. Um, I request other Yes, sir. I'm muted. Uh, Radhika, yeah. Sorry, Devika. Uh, so, our uh, chairperson for today is Dr. Sanjay Tekode, sir, our very own honorary president. Uh, he has been practicing in Pune for the past 27 years, and his areas of interest are fake pore emulsification and refractive surgery. He's a member of ESCRS as well as ASCRS and has uh, numerous presentations at these meetings. Uh, we welcome Tekode, sir, as our chairperson. Uh, other chairperson would be Dr. Shashi Prabha Prasad, ma'am. Uh, she has graduated from KGMC Lucknow and has done MS of Thalmology from AFMC. She is my very super senior. And currently she is professor and head at uh, Department of Ophthalmology at D.Y. Patil Medical College, PCMC Pune. I welcome Shashi Prasad, ma'am, please. Thank you so much. Uh, our judges for today, our first judge would be Dr. Vardaman Kankriya. Uh, he's the director of Asian Eye Hospital. Uh, he is the section editor of IGO of the Keratoconus section. He has numerous international publications as well as presentations. He is the recipient, uh, he's the youngest recipient of the IRSI gold medal as well as the Asia Pacific Refractive Surgery Award as well as the AIS Hardy Award. And recently, uh, his hospital won the Best LASIK Center Award at the hands of our Honorable Governor. Welcome, Vardhaman, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Devika. Uh, our judge for today would be Dr. Mandar Paranspe, sir, also. Uh, he has graduated from Loni and he has done his post-graduation from KM Hospital. He has been practicing in Pune since past several years, since 1998, and he has three centers in Pune, Talegao, and Munaula. He has been an office bearer of MOS and POS. He has also been the past editor of Poster, and he's currently the editor of Blink. Uh, we welcome Mandar Paranspe, sir. Thank you. So today we have several cases from several subspecialties. Uh, uh, this would be the sequence of presentations. First would be Dr. Gayatri Gorse from Dinanath. Then uh, Dr. Apurva from NIO will be presenting. Then Dr. Yogita from Dinanath will be presenting. Then Dr. Bhakti Mehta from BJ Medical College. And then Dr. Adya Bhakti from Dinanath. So I request the participants to be ready with their presentations. 
we'll just go through some instructions. Uh, we have been allotted six minutes for presentation and two minutes for discussion with uh, the judges, the chairpersons, as well as the audience. Uh, the presentation should ideally include some clinical details, images in PowerPoint format, and try not to include any theoretical discussion because that will be discussed with the judges as well. The cases will be judged for originality, research, management of patient, whatever resources were used to manage the patient and time kept that is six minutes for presentation. And I would request you to mute yourself if you're not presenting at that time. So uh, can we start with the first case? I request uh, Dr. Yes, Gayatri yes. to please, please present. Yeah. I'll stop my screen sharing. Dr. Gayatri, you can start screen sharing. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Just a moment. Ma'am, is the screen visible now? Uh, not yet. Yes, now it's visible. Yes, it's visible now. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. My case for today is uh, a stitch in time. I'm presenting a case of deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty with tarsorafi for neurotrophic keratitis. Uh, presenting a case of a 60-year-old male patient who was admitted in the ICU for pyogenic meningitis with cavernous venous sinus thrombosis. He developed exposure keratitis in the left eye because of lag of thalmus while in the ICU. On bedside examination, his vision was hand movements close to face and accurate projection of rays. At that time, lubricants were given. Uh, after discharge, various interventions were tried elsewhere Why? Uh, these were 360 degrees conjunctival peritomy with conjunctival vessel cautery and tarsorafi. But uh, further deterioration happened and this uh, resulted in a leukomatous corneal opacity with vascularization. Uh, after that, the patient was referred to the corneal surgeon uh, and this was the picture in December 2015. Uh, we can see a leukomatous uh, scarring with uh, intense vascularization. Uh, so, uh, a, a dial procedure with tarsorafi was done. This is the intraoperative photograph. Uh, what we can see is the Desmet's membrane uh, and an air bubble in the anterior chamber. This is the post-operative uh, post photograph uh, with uh, the vision being uh, finger countings at 2 meters. The graph uh, looks uh, somewhat uh, like we can see a few loose sutures here. Uh, after that, uh, a month or two months after the procedure, the tarsorafi uh, started loosening. And so a permanent tarsorafi was done. Uh, later, the patient systemically also started improving. This is the sequence of events that happened. Uh, in August 2014, he was admitted with, in the ICU. And uh, in September, after discharge, the various uh, interventions were tried. Then in December, uh, a dial with tarsorafi was done. After that, a repeat permanent tarsorafi. And finally, in June 2016, a FACO with PCIOL was uh, done. After FACO, his uh, visual outcome improved from uh, 660 to 6 by 18, one month post-operative. Uh, but in August 2019, the tarsorafi started, in, the scar started increasing. Uh, it started obscuring the visual axis. And so a uh, uh, monopolar cautery cutting was done. And uh, we can see over here, the, uh, the cut marks are still visible. This cleared the visual axis. And uh, as of today in February 2022, we have a clear uh, uh, graft, a healthy ocular surface, uh, an intact tarsorafi, and his uh, vision also improved to uh, 612 parts, best corrected visual acuity. What we need to realize is uh, my take-home message for this would be, this was a case of CVST, 
and uh, because of the trigeminal nerve involvement, uh, it resulted in neurotrophic keratitis. And in such cases, we usually don't expect a good outcome because of the neurotrophic element. But uh, even after seven years, the graft is uh, still uh, healthy and clear and the patient has improved significantly. Uh, another reason for the uh, scarring tendency, which has not yet been uh, documented anywhere, but it would be that uh, probably the patient had a more keloid tendency, which resulted in the excessive scarring of the tarsula. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri. Uh, I request the judges to please discuss the case with uh, the participant. Vindar, sir. Yeah, so the first question comes to mind is that uh, you said in August uh, 2014, he had uh, this neurotrophic uh, episode. And by September, he had developed a, a scarring of the cornea, right? Uh, so the scarring, yes, sir. Over a time, it developed. So why do you think it happened so fast? And in fact, you also mentioned that some intervention was done for yes. managing his neurotrophic uh, keratitis. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so what could be the reason for that? So probably the neurotrophic element uh, caused the increase in the scarring and the lack of... He was, he was, some intervention was done, right? Some tarsoraphy or some lubricants or something was, he was, he was on some treatment. Yes. So tar you mentioned that probably tarsoraphy was also done at that time. So tarsoraphy was done a month later. Okay. So, so what could be the reason that this, this patient developed it so fast? And what is the uh, status of the other eye? Um, so the status of the other eye is good. And uh, the reasons could be firstly because of the lack of thalmos uh, that caused the exposure keratitis. Second, it could be because of the C, uh, cavernous venous sinus thrombosis, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve being involved resulting in uh, reduced sensations and uh, neurotrophic keratitis. So was there any proptosis noted? No, sir. But did he have any systemic ailments? You haven't mentioned that. Uh, no, sir. He, he, was on, uh, he was admitted for pyogenic meningitis and uh, uh, CVST. This is the record that we got from the patient. Yeah, but I, I think you should also mention if he had any systemic ailments. Maybe diabetes or something else. All right, sir. Or if he's an alcoholic or if he has some other such habits. Because mm -hmm. that has relevance to what, what his course is. Although he's, he's done well in the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, that has relevance to, to his uh, clinical course. Yes. What the man, sir? Yeah. So, first of all, I think it is an interesting and very well-managed case, uh, of course. So, I have two questions for you because we, of course, want a good long-term outcome. Now, until now, the patient has done well, the end result is good, but we want that for the next many decades, the patient should be actually able to have a good survival of the craft. So, what is the lead function currently? What is the? Lead function. How is the lead function right now? Uh, so, the lead function is good. The tarsoraphy is intact. Uh, and uh, the surface is healthy. Surface is healthy. Uh, what is the current status of the dry eye? Uh, so How is the tear film right now? Hmm. The tear film, uh, is the meniscal site is good. It looks fine, right? That's why the luster is good. Uh, so in this scenario, what kind of uh, method was used for dull procedure? So a type 1 bubble procedure was done for the dull. Okay, so a big bubble technique was used. Do you think that a femtosecond laser enabled DALC is also a good option in such cases? Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, okay, actually the femtosecond laser enabled DALC may not work very well with this because mm -hmm. the femtosecond laser doesn't uh, really in intrude into a scar. Okay, so usually the femtosecond laser penetration is not that great. So not mm -hmm. a great case for femtosecond. So I think what was done for the patient was done with the right mindset. Okay, so I think everything otherwise was fine. So, which is the most common nerve which gets involved in cavernous sinus thrombosis? Uh, so, the sixth nerve and uh, third, oh. or fourth, V1, V2, and sixth. 
so you are telling me all the nerves which are there <laughs> so depending on the mechanism the nerve is different as you know if the mechanism is increase in ict then sixth nerve is more common otherwise the third nerve is actually more common but at the end well managed case well presented okay all the best thank you gayatri like to just one second uh, what about confidence injections now what about corneal sensations now was there so uh, it has uh, regenerated we haven't checked it but uh, should be fine now like. because it was a case of neurotrophic keratitis so yes. you should have checked uh, corneal sensations yes. and second thing uh, what is the difference uh, why you are not calling it exposure keratitis uh ma'am i feel it is a component it is uh, it involves both the components okay uh, exposure as well as uh, neuro and what is the meaning of lag of thalamus uh ma'am when the lid cannot completely close the globe actually uh, this is a greek word lagos means rabbit mm -hmm. so rabbit sleeps with open eyes so that mm -hmm. is why it is called lag of thalamus mm -hmm. that's all from my side All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Kathy, I think you can stop your screen sharing. Uh, now I invite Dr. Apurva for her case presentation. Yes. Good morning, all. Yes, so good morning. Yes, uh, I'm presenting a case of intraocular foreign body. So presenting a case of 28-year-old male who presented to our hospital with left eye sudden onset diminution of vision since seven hours, which was associated with pain, redness, following penetrating injury with iron particle while he was working. So on examination, his vision uh, was for right eye was six six, and for left eye it was CF one meter, counting fingers at one meter, unaided. So the right eye was uh, within normal limit. The left eye, uh, his extraocular motility was full. His lids were normal. Conjun uh, conjunctiva was little congested, whereas the cornea was cornea had a sealed rupture of uh, iron particle. His AC was formed and uh, uh, his pupil was dilated under mediate, and his lens status was clear. The fundus the uh, fundus examination showed us uh, the left eye. Uh, a foreign body of size six by five mm seen at superior temporal region with surrounding hemorrhage inflammation. So after which we uh, performed his anterior segment photo, fundus photo, OCT, and CT scan to rule out uh, the foreign body. So in the anterior segment photo, we can as we can see there is at the three o'clock position a cell seed cornea uh, scleral rupture. Whereas the conjunctiva is little congested, otherwise his lens status is clear. Even the iris is uh, regular. I mean, dilated under mediatic. The fundus photo it shows the uh, impacted iron particle at the superior quad uh, temporal quadrant with uh, surrounding vitreous uh, localized vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, the CT scan it uh, gave us a, a confirmed diagnosis. Of a foreign body of Hounsfield unit of three thousand one hundred, which is suggestive of metal. So I'll just play one video about uh, how we performed the surgery. So. The patient was operated with vitrectomy and the iron foreign body was removed. So how we went through is we did vitrectomy around the uh, iron particle. Later on with uh, diluted tricot, we did uh, PVD induction, completed the vitrectomy. Then a sclerotomy was done. Through which a metal was passed, and then the intraocular foreign body was removed. So we did a sclerotomy, little wider one, 
so that uh, the particles won't get uh, get won't get stuck in the uh, globe. So endo laser has been done. So this is on follow up. Uh, this was the fundus photo showing us no signs of any kind of uh, de detachment or any kind of tear. The sealed, uh, the iron particle which was there, it has been sealed, it has been removed, it has been sealed. And the patient's best corrected visual is 660 and there is no sign of vitreous hemorrhage as well and no adverse reactions were found. So the possible complications in IOFB we can consider as uh, consider end of siderosis, retinal tear or detachment. Uh, PVR, sympathetic ophthalmia, and optic neuropathy. So these signs were not noted in our patient, and he's uh, right now 660, uh, happy with his vision, and uh, all good with it. Right. Uh, Vardaman, sir, would you like to comment on this? Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, I think uh, very well presented and uh, well investigated, well managed case. Thank you. Uh, so in this case, as you have shown on OCT, the macula OCT was completely normal. So what yes, is sir. the reason to have a 6 by 60 vision? Uh, I really can't comment on it because as everything, even the macula is clear, even uh, as in no signs of edema, nothing, no traumatic macular hole as well, no cornea opacity, nothing is there, but this patient has not improved uh, uh, beyond 660. It is the localized uh, metal particle which has caused. Otherwise, other than that, I don't think there should be any reason for it. Yeah, but as ophthalmologists, we have to yeah. always look at yeah. the vision of the patient. That's our ultimate aim, right? Mm -hmm. And at the yes, last yes, photograph yes. that you have shown, as the last fundus photograph that you have shown post-operatively, there, mm -hmm. there seems to be a bit of scarring on the macula on that photograph. Can you just no, show no, that no. photograph again? Uh, oh. So there's the... Uh, we've uh, closed the patient on silicone oil, sir. Okay. Uh, so that's the one. So if you could just show me that photograph again. One. Did you repeat a macular OCT post-operatively also? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was the same picture, sir. Okay. Then I think you should definitely look for the reason to have decrease in vision. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the photo. Yes. That's the one. Yes, that sir. Right. So that the retina is also settled and no further complications to be noted. See, just try to see. Uh, second thing is that if you have a six millimeter uh, tear which starts from uh, cornea, goes to limbus and goes up to the sclera, three millimeter into the cornea, three millimeter into the sclera, where will you take your first suture? Uh, so on the uh, first on the uh, Cornea search so that the A is formed and uh, okay. Actually, you should you should take it yeah. at the limbus, at the limbus. anatomical landmark. Yeah. Right. So some principles you have to always keep in mind whenever you want to do this. All right. Sure. Okay. Otherwise, well presented. All the best. Shishi Prasad, ma'am, would you like to comment on this? Uh, when you will not like to remove the intraocular foreign body, are there any indication contraindications or indications? For not removing the IOFB. So, sorry, ma'am. Are there any indications of not removing the intraocular foreign body, or every time any foreign body you have to remove? No, no, it's not that uh, every. Yeah. It's this, this. In this case, we had this metal thing. So mm -hmm. further, it can complicate, like cirrhosis bulbi or any kind of which uh, these deposition may uh, damage. So if there is. Uh, no harm in the iron particle, uh, any foreign body, we can leave as it is if the patient is comfortable and we can keep a follow up for these patients. So, in this case, it's the metal particle okay. that is the reason we removed it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And that's all. Do you have any question for her? Yeah, uh, you said you had uh, done a CT scan. So, what was the reason of doing a CT scan? So, uh, just to be on the uh, safer side and as well as there is, we noted only one foreign body. What if there is more foreign body uh, in the globe? So for, for, to, to make sure, to make our diagnosis more clear and to intervene for this patient, we've done CT scan to be on the safer side. Absolutely true. And uh, second is about the uh, visual uh, acuity. Uh, do you think some other investigations could be done to assess why his visual acuity was poor, hasn't recovered? 
any other test that you can think of no because his macula i think macula is well uh, so do you I think, think do you think some electrophysiology studies can be done oh, okay yes eog can be done sir. so which which one of those do you think is more relevant to this case i think uh, we should have done eog also for this patient how, how many electrophysiology tests are there e eog and erg sir anything else or i can what is the vp Ah, so, yes. so which which one would you order in case you you don't you are not satisfied with his visual recovery? Right, right. And why? So we could look for uh, his. Uh, okay, I think this is something which you need to look at. Order, you need yes. to do you need to do an ERG because he may he may, patient may have had some kind of a. uh trauma to the uh, macula uh, which is functional structurally the macula may appear macula normal macula looks fine right fine thank okay. you yes all right thank you dr purva yes thank you ma'am uh, next i invite dr yogita for her case presentation yes ma'am yes uh, you can start screen sharing with yes Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm I'm going to present a case of cataract and eye graft. Yes, you can please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, a 87 year old male patient came to ophthal opd with uh, okay that we cannot see your slides complaints of they are not moving ahead of vision in both eyes okay? dr yogita yes, yes. ma'am uh, now we can see them slide show put it on the slide show yes uh, it is not on slide show Yes, ma'am. Now is it visible? Um, no, it's not moving ahead. I can still see the past history slide. Uh, can you try putting it on slide show and moving it? Um, is it? It is not. Yeah. Now it's yeah presenting the plate surface. And you can keep it this way. Even with old male yeah. patient, came complaints of diminution of vision in both eyes, which was gradually in onset and progressive in nature since one year. His known case of hypertension and chronic kidney disease since thirty years and was on treatment. There is no significant ophthalmic history. Abhurva, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. On ophthalmic evaluation, the head posture and facial symmetry was well maintained. Visual acuity in both eyes was perception of light and projection of rays in all four quadrants were present. In both eyes, the lids and the adnexa were normal. Pupil was circular, reacting to light, and anterior chamber was of normal depth. And there is presence of black cataract in both eyes. Intraocular pressure in right eye was 16 millimeters of mercury on Goldman aplanation tonometry, and in left eye it is 14 millimeters of mercury on Goldman aplanation tonometry. Uh, as there is a dense cataract, so the dilated fundus uh, there is no uh, view of the posterior segment. This is the grade of the cataract in um, right eye. Uh, so, patient underwent investigations like USG B scan for any abnormality in the posterior segment, 
and routine investigations like hemogram urine routine and microscopy blood sugar levels fasting and postprandial and uh, electrolyte uh, ecg so patient was posted for cataract extraction with small incision cataract surgery after all the investigations so there are challenges during the surgery because of the dense black cataract as the pupil was moderately dilating and the anterior capsule because of the black cataract the anterior capsule was not visible so there may be the difficulty while capsular exits there is zonular because of the long standing cataract there may be the chances of zonular weakness and difficulty while nucleus prolapse due to the hard cataract and uh, because of the long standing cataract there may be the posterior capsule will be thin so there is uh, one uh, video you can present the video separately if it's not running in the slide show So this is a moderately dilated pupil. So we did uh, the large uh, scleral incision so that during the nucleus delivery there will be no struggle. The capsule is stained with tripan blue, and the capsular excess was uh, completed successfully. A careful hydro dissection was done. Nucleus was prolapsed into the anterior segment, anterior chamber. and it was delivered by a sandwich technique and lens was placed successfully so all the challenges we overcome uh, by uh, during the surgery on uh, post operative course we are given uh, oral antibiotics and uh, oral anesthetics and topical antibiotics and steroids uh, for one day we had given acetaminophen on post op day 1 there was uh, microcystic corneal edema and the, the vision was uh, 2 by 60 on post op day 7 uh, the vision in uh, was uh, improved to 636 with pinhole 618 and corneal edema was resolved few desmets uh, desmets cold were present these are the photographs of uh, post op day 1 there is a cystic edema and on post op day 7 the edema is resolved so the cataract nigra is less common nowadays because of uh, early diagnosis and better management and uh, small incision cataract surgery has better outcome and less complications for such types of hard cataract thank you
presentation. Uh, uh, I just want to ask you: Was a specular uh, microscopy done? Because the status of the endothelium will also be important uh, in deciding uh, what uh, surgical approach you will uh, do. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, because of the low vision, the patient was not able to uh, cooperate. So we used uh, viscoelastic, better viscoelastic devices to uh, prevent the endothelium, like uh, visco tank. Okay. Because you are right, at least surgical man uh, manipulations should be the priority here. Yes, sir. Shashi Prasad, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, just tell me, what is the cause of this black pigment? What is this black pigment in Tetrata Nigra? Uh, because, uh, ma'am, because of COVID, he extended uh, like two to three years. So that the cataracts cause and uh, the the become black now. So what do you think it is? Uh, what what is giving black color to the cataract nigra? Which pigment? Mm. What happens to the lens proteins? Because uh, because some proteins are mel uh, melanogenic, like tyrosine. And uh, sometimes there's conversion of this uh, tyrosine and tryptophan and leucine into melanin. So that is why it is uh, black in color. Will you use a soft shell uh, technique in these cases? Uh, yes, ma'am, we used viscoat and... Uh, what is soft shell technique? Uh, we, use, uh, we first place um, high visc. And then above that, we uh, place viscoat so it covers the inner surface of the cornea. What is the type of uh, OBD? Yes, ma'am. What are the types of OBD? Yeah, online, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What are the types of OBDs? Do you know? Yes, ma'am. So, which one you will inject first? Uh, high visc, ma'am. Ibis. What is the type of OBD? Hmm. Okay. This. Okay. Thank you. And that part, uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, was this surgery done by you or by your mentor? By my mentors. Now, suppose you are the operating surgeon and you are just given a choice of doing this surgery by FACO. Ah, this is a hypothetical question. Name. Then what are the strategies that you think you will use to uh, have a safe surgery in these kind of cataracts? Uh, in uh, FACO, we have to take, uh, mostly we should take the scleral incision. So if in case we have to convert, so we should be in safer side. And uh, there is a four quadrant uh, Divide the nucleus in four quadrants. So even before going uh, ahead with FACO, uh, I would like, like to ask you what parameters would you like to use while doing FACO in such cataracts? Are there are there some some special parameters that you would like to use if you have all the machines at your disposal then what kind of uh, technique um, would you uh, the energy required should be high okay and uh, considering that the patient had a very small pupil what are the various ways in which you can manage a cataract surgery with a small pupil? Either we use uh, uh, iris hooks or... Uh, yes. Pupiloplasty. 
what kind of pupilloplasty are we talking about? I'm talking of small pupil. What what are the what are the techniques that you can use, or what are the options for small pupil? Um, big a ring can be used. So broadly, I would divide it as pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic. So I think you need to sort of look at it because this is not a very uncommon situation. And uh, one more last question is, uh, uh, there was some zonular laxity. Uh, so what are the measures that you would take to address that issue? Because you need to plan beforehand. You already know what the situation is. You've anticipated well the possible complications and the outcomes. So you need to be ready with everything uh, that can go wrong and how to rectify that situation. Uh, Viscoelastic uh, devices should be... Uh... I'm talking of uh, zonular laxity now. CTR ring should be ready. Okay. And three-piece lens in okay. case. Okay, fine. That's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Yogita. Thank you. Uh, I now invite Dr. Bhakti from BJMC to present her case. Please, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, is my uh, yeah is uh, are my slides visible? Yes, they are visible. Yes. Please uh, make it a slideshow. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have a case presentation, an interesting presentation of wet uh, age-related macular degeneration. So there was a 62-year-old female who came with <clears throat> complaints of gradually progressive painless diminution of vision in the left eye since two months. The patient was apparently all right two months back, after which she started complaining of diminution of vision in the left eye, which was gradually in onset, progressive in nature, and was not associated with any ocular pain. So there was no history of any ocular surgery or trauma in the past. Patient is a known case of diabetes, for which she is on medications, and it is well controlled. So the general and systemic examinations were within normal limits. For this, we just uh, look for the uh, uh, blood pressure and the pulse rate uh, of the patient. On ocular examination, the extraocular movements were full, free, and equal in all gazes. Uh, anterior segment examination, uh, the visual acuity in the right eye was 636. With the fraction, it was improving to 618. And in the left eye, it was also 636, which was not improving further. Uh, rest of the anterior segment findings were normal. And I'm sorry, the lens wasn't clear. She had an immature senile cataract in both the eyes. Uh, so these were the, the posterior segment findings. If you look at the right eye, they were, we, uh, we, we were able to see multiple drusens, medium-sized drusens in the periphery. What was uh, a significant finding is that we, we found on in the left eye. Uh, first thing is, of course, we found drusens in the left eye as well, but uh, there were uh, there was this thickening in the macula, what were, uh, thickening in the macula region associated with an intraretinal hemorrhage. Uh, so we were suspecting because the patient already had drusens, we were suspecting that there was this uh, uh, wet ARMD associated with a pachychoroid, um, one of the pachychoroid diseases. So uh, this was the OCT picture of the patient where we are able to see there is a flat and ragged uh, RPE, uh, retinal pigment epithelium, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the retinal pigment epithelium, it was flat and uh, there, there were, a multi, it, it was completely irregular, which was again suggesting of either a CNPM or a PCV, but we were also able to see a subretinal bleed in this case and uh, a double layer sign was seen, which was more towards uh, a PCV. So this was a, a fundus, uh, sorry, this was an FFA picture of this patient. Uh, so in the left eye, this, this was taking the venous phase. So in the left eye, uh, there, uh, uh, there was pooling of dye. Now this pooling of dye in the entire phase of FFA, it increased in intensity as well as area, which was uh, more suggesting of uh, uh, a pooling of dye in the subretinal space. And also there was hypo, uh, hypofluorescence because of uh, just inferior to the pooling of dye, which we could correlate easily with an intraretinal hemorrhage. 
सो आ प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस इज लेफ्ट आई वेट लेफ्ट वेट ए आर एम डी क्वेरी वी क्वेरी पी सी वी वी कुड कन्फर्म दिस बाय आई सी जी और एज वेल एज ऑक्टा Uh, currently, we have given anti-vegf ranibizumab zero point five mg uh, uh, to this patient, and the patient was just uh, given anti-vegf three weeks back. So we are waiting for the first follow-up of the patient to see the progress. Thank you. Thank you, Bhakti. Uh, Vardhaman sir, do you have any questions for Dr. Bhakti? Yeah. So, Dr. Bhakti, well uh, investigated, yes. well documented case. Uh, yes. Of course, now you don't have the outcome analysis yet. so what are the things that you look at uh, when you look at the post at one month of four weeks oct uh, what are the things that you want to see after you have given an anti vegf injection uh, yes sir. so first thing what i uh, what i see is the macular thickness if it has reduced the edema has reduced second thing what we, what i see is the double layer sign that i was able to that i was uh, seeing in the first uh, uh, the first day itself like when the patient presented so the uh, hemorrhage that the thickness has decreased also i will see the uh, uh, photoreceptor uh, photoreceptor function at that time if it has worsened and uh, also if the double layer sign has disappeared okay and anything that particularly you would like to see in the gray scale scans versus the color coded scans um so i would see the um, structurally if i say if the ellipsoid zone is uh, still okay so in the color coded scans so mm -hmm. what happens to the colors when the uh, the lesion is going to start responding Uh, so it will go towards a cooler uh, color side like the red will uh, become greener matlab in the rp area you yes, sure okay so compared to the other anti vegf the newer anti vegf such as brolicizumab how is it different Have you heard of this new drug? Yes, sir. Yes, I have heard of the. Uh, I have heard of the drug, but the difference is. Uh... Okay. So it I is think... more specific for the VEGF A. Uh, okay. That, that's all uh, I know about drugs. Any particular advantage of that drug over the other drugs? Uh, sir, so we can give it on a three monthly basis rather than every month injection more frequently. Yeah. Yeah, so that is one of the advantages that yeah. half life is more. Uh, all right, so I think you can uh, probably share your uh, post four week scans also whenever they are available. Yes, and yes, find yes. out about the questions that I have already asked you. Sure. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you, okay. Thanks. Well, uh, just um, in addition to this question, how to decide which uh, anti VEGF you give? I mean, uh, is there any particular uh, uh, clinical picture or Uh, based on what how do you decide which anti vegf i'm not sure about that so more mostly on uh, the results of the clinical trials ranibizumab has proved to be very efficient in such cases so Okay. Are there any more questions for? Yeah. Uh, suppose suppose uh, your uh, anti vegf doesn't work. Uh, what are the other options that you are looking at? Uh, so we will give anti vegf initially on a monthly basis. We can give and uh, on say four or five uh, uh, follow ups. If the patient if if the patient doesn't improve, uh, since this is a. Uh, uh, Foveal, uh, this, this area is, in, is it's involving the macula. We can go for a PDT in this patient or a micropulse laser also. So, what kind of PDT will you do? The routine PDT uh, or something else? Uh, so, we can go for a low fluence PDT in these patients. And are you aware of any comparative studies of uh, PDT 
versus micropulse laser effectiveness in PCB. Can you uh, cite some studies and what are the results? No, sir. I, I haven't read of the. I think you need to look at it because then you yes, need to sir. decide if suppose both treatments are there and which yes, one will you choose and why. Sure, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'll look at it. Sure, sir. Um, Bhakti, what is the cause of double layer sign? <coughs> Can you hear me? Dr. Bhakti? Dr. Bhakti, are you there? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes. What is the cause of double layer sign? Mm. In pachychoroid, uh, you see it correlated thickness also. Have you seen choroidal thickness in this case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so generally, in pachychoroid, uh -huh. uh, uh, it is uh, the choroidal thickness should be more than 390 mac uh, micrometers. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, we could not get a because very clear of, uh, picture of the OCT because the patient wasn't fixing well. So the choroidal layer is not that clear. So we weren't able to measure the uh, choroidal thickness. What are the other uh, disorders in this spectrum? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, pachychoroidal, it includes a choroidal neovascular membrane, a PCV, uh, mm -hmm. in this case, a retinal pigment epitheliopathy, and uh, CSR. Okay. Any DD in this case, besides PCV? Uh, what is, what is MACTEL? This... What is MACTEL? Uh, it's a but it's it's a telangiectasia which is there at the macular uh, the vascular telangiectasia near the macular area within 500 micrometers of the macula. Uh, but now looking at the drusens in this in this it patient, we are either therapy. suspecting a PCV yeah. or a CNV. So if it is in a young patient, then you have to <laughs> exclude macular also. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhakti. Thank you. Uh, next, I invite uh, the final case for today's meeting, Dr. Adya. You can start screen sharing. Good morning, ma'am. Good yes, morning. Ma I'll do it. Just a second, ma'am. Just a second. Yes, sir. Yeah, as she is uploading, <coughs> can I do a little bit of an announcement? Yes, sir. POS and MOS is coming up with the uh, glaucoma walkathon on 12th. Mm -hmm. We have taken the police permission 7 to 8. I would like everybody to come in. I had a talk with uh, uh, Rojita also. <laughs> so we have Dr. Siddharth uh, Dende, the deputy mayor to flag off this and also ACP of uh, what we say, Swargate Police Station, who's going to be part of the rally. So I invite everybody to be part of it. One. Second is, uh, two more things before she starts the presentation. A little innovation in our clinical meeting is what I would suggest. Uh, Sanjay and uh, yeah, this Devika and Rujuta should take it. Yes. You are asking these questions if they are not able to answer. At the mm -hmm. end of the session, once you have decided yes. about the marking, I think clarify the spots, uh, each question, what are the answers? Like okay. Vataman asked, Mandara has asked. Mm -hmm. I think we go one up there, then the rest of the city societies, what I suggest. Yes. This, maybe not this time, if we are short of time. Next time, I think uh, we have a panel of each, uh, like the posterior segment in surgeon, and right. segment surgeon, and refractive surgeon also, mm -hmm. as uh, special invitees. Yes. Give them a proper this thing. This is what I, we were expecting. Once the question and answers and the markings are done, I think at the end of this session, these are the questions which you have not answered and this should be the right answer. So there will be a go-home message for each of the clinical meetings. Okay? Yes. Sanjay? Uh, yes. yes. Good suggestion, sir. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. Yeah. I, need, I think we need to do it because, see, a lot of people, we also learned it that way. But if the answers are also put up, they'll come better prepared next time. And uh, right. one more thing I think we should start is the mentor who is uh, yes. uh, allowing the person to this thing. They should have a mock session before. Uh, I mean, you can send it a call. 
accordingly ke baba they should have a mock session so they'll be still better presentation they have been doing very nice but they'll be one up i think will be one of the best societies in uh, uh, maharashtra and maybe in your okay go ahead sorry sorry for the interruption thank you thank you this way thank you sir uh, go ahead Tadya, please go ahead good morning everybody uh, my patient is a 41 year old male government officer by profession resident of pune uh he came to our iopd with complaint of diminution of vision in the right eye which he noticed 3 days back it was gradual painless and progressive in nature uh, uh the patient said that he had a compromised central vision with hazy peripheral vision uh it was not associated with photophobia redness pain or uh, floaters or any flashes patient does not give any history of animal contact the uh, ophthalmic complaints were not associated with any systemic manifestations and the patient does not have any known systemic comorbidities ocular history he does not have any he does not give any history of spectacle use since childhood no history of any trauma to the eye or the other eye no history of use of any topical medications in the past on ophthalmic evaluation his visual acuity in the right eye best corrected was finger counting 1 meter which was not improving with pinhole and near vision was less than 36 left eye his vision was 66 n6 color vision right eye could not be uh, could not identify the color plate also and left eye was found to be normal uh, head posture was normal and the facial symmetry was well maintained on uh, slit lamp examination uh, the right eye showed mild conjunctival congestion and all the other findings were found to be within normal limits the pupil both the pupil was circular reacting to light uh intraocular pressure was found to be in the right eye was 16 mm of mercury with goldman's aplanation tonometry and left eye was found to be 18 mm of mercury by goldman aplanation tonometry fundus examination was done after dilatation with uh, tropicasil plus eye drop the media was found to in the right eye the media was found to be clear uh, the cup disc ratio the uh, optic disc was normal in size with a cup disc ratio of 0.3 a uh, gray white lesion with irregular uh, irregular in shape extending from the optic disc towards the periphery in the superotemporal quadrant barely involving the foveal region could be seen uh, it the lesion was uh, uh found to be in the choroidal level as the retinal vessels could be traced on the lesions and active margins of the choroidal lesion could be seen in the periphery uh in the left eye the media was clear with a uh, cup disc ratio of 0.3 and healthy neuroretinal rim and the vessels were seen uh, the found to be normal these are the photographs of the uh, patient on day 1 which shows uh, the gray white lesion uh extending in the superotemporal quadrant and um, with the active lesions can the active margins of the lesion can be seen this is the periphery of the photograph uh, of the fundus we did autofluorescence for the patient on day 1 the hypofluorescent uh, area shows the regressed activity of the uh, choroiditis and the hyperflor uh, of the lesion and the hyperfluorescent area uh, as signifies the active disease this was the oct which was done on day 1 which shows gray white irregular subretinal infiltrates at the rp and the corio capillaries level my provisional diagnosis is right eye serpiginous choroiditis a uh, differential diagnosis will be uh, white dot syndromes which includes uh, acute posterior multifocal placoid pigment epitheliopathy uh, but the placoid lesions are not visible and uh, there were no anterior segment findings so i would like to rule out apme multifocal choroiditis and panuveitis can be ruled out because there is no vitreitis and punched out lesions a uh, presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome can be ruled out blue uh, um, ruled out because of the uh, absence of punched out lesions uh, acute retinal pigment epithelitis can be ruled out because of absence of any typical macular lesions uh, the patient does not give any history of animal uh, contact and there is no history of any sat- uh, no uh, on uh, examination there is no satellite lesion uh, lesion so i would like to rule out toxoplasmosis tuberculous choroiditis can be ruled out because there is no uh, uh, anterior uh, segment findings 
um panuviatis harada syndrome and sympathetic ophthalmia can be ruled out because there is no history of any trauma and no history of any other systemic findings or uh, history management investigations were done for uh, systemic investigations were tu tu tubercular gold quantiferon test was done hemogram esr vdr and tpha uh, or tpha and chest x ray was advised ophthalmic the patient's fundus photography was done autofluorescence was done and oct was done the photographs i have already shown the patient was started on oral prednisolone 1 g per kg body weight the patient was referred to um, the infectious disease uh, specialist to start the patient on anti tubercular uh, therapy empirically in view of tubercular uveitis most probable diagnosis of tubercular uveitis and after one month of treatment with oral steroids the patient was given intravitreal injection oropod and uh, the patient was eventually started on tablet azathioprine 100 mg once daily this is the visual acuity timeline according to which his treatment was planned as i told the patient was started on day one the patient was started on oral prednisolone uh, and as the choroid artis started increasing uh, and it's uh, it barely spare, it was barely sparing the fovea the patient was given intravitreal oropod after that the patient had uh, further diminution of vision with no improvement in the vision actually and um, big but because the iop was rising the patient was uh, referred to the rheumatologist and it eventually the patient was started on as a thioprin and the oral prednisolone uh, oral prednisolone was stepped up these are the follow up images on the initiation of akt and oral steroids uh, we can see the uh, healing uh, choroiditis post intravitreal oropod uh, there was a significant regression in the choroiditis but because of raised uh, raised intraocular pressure further intravitreal oropod was not given and the patient was referred to a rheumatologist uh, who started the patient on oral azathioprine and um, as we can see uh, after around a month of the treatment uh, around a week of the treatment we can see the healed choroiditis scars with only a few areas of active disease and the patient had a significant improvement equity his spinal visual acuity was found to be 618 and uh, near vision was n6 these are my references thank you thank you adya do we have any questions for doctor yeah yeah in yeah, your differential so diagnosis i'm sorry you go ahead for that no no doctor mandar sir you go ahead please yeah. okay in your differential diagnosis you said you uh, have ruled out tuberculous uh, uh, cause etiology no sir tubercular choroid um, in your differential uh, the, in your differential diagnosis you mentioned that yes, you sir. ruled out toxoplasma and tubercular uh, etiologies is that right uh, toxoplasma yes sir it was ruled out as in because of the yeah. findings toxoplasma was ruled out so you also said you ruled out tuberculous choroiditis sorry uh, not tubercular choroiditis okay so now yeah. considering that this is a serpiginous choroiditis and uh, uh, probably it could be of a tuberculous origin you have done yeah. uh, quantiferon gold uh, as a, a diagnostic test do you think yes, that sir. one test is just enough to uh, decide on uh, the cause uh, whether the, the patient may have tubercular uh, etiology or not actually sir we had so, ordered uh, a tubercular quantiferon test and it came out to be positive so the patient was started on treatment because it was found to be positive and his chest x ray was found to be normal so we and he did not have any systemic complaints so we did not want to um, go for any further systemic investigations as such so the patient was started on akt after his liver uh, profile test was done and uh, he was started on akt after the gold uh, quantiferon test came positive so what is the sensitivity and specificity of quantiferon gold test um, do you think that one test is good enough to decide on starting akt um sir um, but in a uh, like india because it is an endemic disease tuberculosis so akt can be started in view of uh, most probable diagnosis of tubercular uveitis 
treatment can be started uh, but um, i agree with you that treatment can be started but is it good enough but quantiferon has shown to be a very good uh, the specificity so, is very good for quantiferon test so are there any corroborative tests that you would think of before de- taking a decision to start akt before starting akt yeah a liver profile test should be done no no um, i'm talking of corroborative test to establish tuberculosis as a etiology now you're looking at tuberculosis as a etiology for this entity yes sir okay so apart from quantiferon gold are there any other tests like uh, think of the bronchoalveolar lavage pcr can be done or uh, how many centers if, in india offer bronchoalveolar lavage anything sorry. more more easily accessible do you think a, a, a tt would be a more relevant test a tuberculosis test montus test yes um sir it will be relevant but after quantiferon test is positive montus but, test uh, in india it is positive for mo- it can be uh, positive so for many to, patients after uh, so the bcg vaccination you need to ask this question as to what is the sensitivity and specificity of each of these tests okay sir and to the best of my knowledge quantiferon gold does not have a very good sensitivity so you can't yeah, depend on just specific. one diagnostic test to establish okay. etiology and there is one more radiological test apart from chest x ray which you can think of that ct yes which which again HRCT. is ct yes in isolation it may not have a very good sensitivity and specificity but i think if you have corroborative evidence then probably you can think of anti tubercular treatment because we are talking of a 9 month treatment so we have to also think of the consequences of those treatments yes sir yes sir thank you ियंटिफिकेंटिफरे positive in almost 50% of the individuals in india okay sir vartman sir right so uh, i think it was well managed well presented case a uh, very good outcome at the end because posterior uv at is is uh, not very easy to manage uh, i would definitely agree with uh, dr gupta sir and dr mandar that uh, even the monto is important uh, to establish your actual diagnosis and it is presumptive that what you are doing currently uh, what i want to ask you is that what is the specific advantage of the tb gold versus the monto in indian scenario so because of the um, because tuberculosis is an endemic disease and uh, we all have bcg vaccination uh, like all indians they undergo bcg vaccination so the sensitivity in montus test like as sir told that uh, the induration size it will tell us about the um, disease activity maybe yes and uh, as you have also correctly said it is the bcg that all of us receive so that's why yes, the tb gold becomes slightly more specific uh, as compared to the man 2 uh, second thing is that can a tb gold test differentiate between a active uh, tuberculous infection versus past infections tb gold mm. yes yes sir um... Only don't I don't know. Okay, that's the right answer that you don't know, but uh, it cannot. Okay, so it cannot tell you cannot. whether it is active or it has been there in the past. Second thing okay. is, it was a macular threatening uh, posterior yes, UV atus uh, that you have seen. Uh, so, yes. was did you also consider giving uh, IV MP instead of just giving oral steroids? No, sir. IV MP was not given. Uh, mm-hmm. To the patient, uh, actually, with oral steroids, 
only there was decrease in the um, there was regression but as it was macular threatening so intravitreal orocot was only given okay uh, usually because intravitreal orocot as you have correctly seen in the case has caused increase mm -hmm. in iop actually okay. ivmp becomes a mainstay of treatment when it is macular threatening disorder uh, second thing is that uh, as you have a serpiginous choroiditis there is something also called as a multifocal serpiginoid choroidopathy Yes. yes. So, what sir. is the difference between the two? Uh, sir, if there is any active infection, uh, then it is um, serpiginoid choroiditis. Like, if we find uh, that the patient has um, pulmonary tuberculosis also, or any other infectious. Uh, so, on infection. your ocular, on your ocular findings, how will you differentiate? Sir, uh, in. The posterior uh, find uh, the posterior the choroid uh, the posterior findings will remain posterior segment findings will be similar only. But in serpiginoid choroiditis, we see uh, intermediate uveitis can also be seen. Like uh, vitritis will be there, and anterior segment also there we'll see activity KPs yeah. and. Correct. Oh, okay. So vitreous so inflammation is going to be more in that case. More right? in that. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. All right. Okay. All the best. Thank you, sir. So, Adya, what is the cause of uh, classic serpiginous choroiditis? Classic serpiginous. It is usually non-infective and autoimmune. Autoimmune. Yes. Okay. And in this okay. case, you have taken color vision also. Yes, ma'am. So, why? Why color vision in this case? What you want to do? Ma'am, ma macular function test can be seen, but uh, so which color in macular function test? No, the no, the optic yeah. disc involvement. If if the patient has a low vision, we can if the patient is able to identify. In this case, I don't think it is very relevant because. Relevant. Okay. Because, Thank you, Adhya. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Adya. Thank you, ma'am. So, before we go on to a quick discussion, I'd like to invite Dr. Rujita, ma'am. She has a few announcements. I want to hear you. Yeah, so we had a wonderful clinical meeting with lots of discussions, lots of interesting cases. Just a few announcements before the chairperson sum up the clinical meeting. So, as we all know, 10th March is the last date for filing the nominations for the post of Vice President POS, Joint Secretary, Joint Treasurer, and Managing Committee members for post. Secondly, uh, please send the members' achievements to uh, edit a poster email and send applications for POS Professor Bhatodekar Award to Secretary POS. Uh, it is for the best PNB student. And uh, yes, the AGM for this for the next year, like AGM in April 2022, 3rd of April will be at Pune Club. Yeah, over to Dwayne. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I would like to invite Shashi Prasad, ma'am, to discuss uh, the cases and the meeting today. So at the outset, I want to congratulate all the speakers. So we had variety of cases and uh, there was very uh, good discussion by uh, Dr. Mandal and Dr. Vardhaman. And uh, I think we had variety of cases from neurotrophic uh, keratitis to interocular foreign body, then cataracta nigra, then wet RMD, and then uh, finally, serpiginous choroiditis. So I think this was a very good uh, clinical meeting. And thank you very much. And uh, I really thank, want to thank uh, Dr. Takabre and POS team for inviting me and having me here. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. It was a pleasure uh, you being there. Uh, you are into academics and also Dr. Mandar, very good friend of mine. and. Uh, really, as a suggestion was given uh, by Dr. Jitnesh, we should uh, also have a discussion uh, so that the students uh, or the, the people who can learn uh, um, other uh, aspects of uh, the management. Uh, Sanjay? Yes. Just a word again once more. I think Seema yes, wants to... Yes, Good morning. Give me a minute in between once you finish. 
Vote of thanks is given. Yes, she is yes, proposing the vote of thanks. Good morning, all. I am Dr. Seema Kishore, of US. I would like to thank chair today's chairperson, Dr. Sanjay Dekode and Dr. Shashi Prabha Ma'am, for uh, honoring our invitation. And I want to thank uh, today's judges, Dr. Vardhaman Gangriya and Dr. Manda Paranse, moderator Dr. Devika Doshi, and our secretary uh, Rujita Majve. I want to thank Digital for their technical support and all the audience for making this uh, clinical uh, meeting. Uh, and uh, I also want to thank the PG students who present a variety of cases. And uh, this is the last uh, clinical meeting of our tenure. <laughs> Uh, thank you once for uh, for everything, and I hand over to Dr. Nanswala for the for the further announcements. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll uh, first we'll have a quick screenshot. Sure, so please uh, switch on the videos, everybody, all the participants. Yes, please switch on your videos. Please switch on your videos. Uh, Dr. Adya, Dr. Yogita, please switch on your videos. Yeah. Yes, done. Done? Thank Achha, you, David. A word from me, uh, Sanjay, if yes, you can sir. allow me just a minute. Yeah. I would request, request the PUS to officially send to all the institutes stating that they should be part of it's under the ages of MOS and POS to take, be part of the uh, walkathon on 12th morning, 7 to 8. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can write an email to the, uh, the uh, what we say, college heads, AFMC, DY Patil, Bharti, yes. uh, Sasun. Everybody and be part of the PGs also should be part of it. We invite them for the walkathon. Yeah. Uh, this is what I would like to say and what I had suggested is after every clinical meeting, of course, this is your last of this, but henceforth, I think if the POS can take over, keep a faculty of each of this post uh, once they do the judging, I think we should also uh, give back you know, what exactly are the right answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think our judges did contribute, both Valdaman and Mandar did contribute a lot. Yes. Uh, but yes, uh, we should have more of uh, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank all the judges you. and the chairpersons for joining. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Well done, Devika. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Devika. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Vardaman. Thank you, Vardaman, Mandar, Jim, and all the participants. Yes. Great. Thank you, Dr. Daswala, sir. Sanjay, best of your tenure. Very nicely done. The thank whole you. year was thank very you. good. Everybody enjoyed yes. it, especially yes. the yes. clinical meetings have taken definitely. a different turn, but I think definitely. it can still get better. Sure. Definitely, definitely. Bye. I think this uh, clinical meetings uh, yeah. was the flagship project and uh, till, yeah. I mean, whatever cases I have seen, they are really up to, I think they should be I That was good. Our moderators have been good. Our secretary, our treasurer, everyone has taken a lot of effort. And of course, it's a team effort. So, Yes, sir, all the four clinical meetings were really good with a variety of presentation, good Very judges, good discussion. Definitely. Really. A lot of things to learn. And I think uh, this should this uh, it should be the way to go. Yeah. We'll all, we'll all meet on 12th now. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, 12th problem. is a working day, Saturday. Saturday morning. Yeah, that's why. That's why. So that I, is I, the problem. Is special, <laughs> madam, <laughs> this is a special request. The ACP uh -huh. is also himself coming of Swargate uh -huh. Police Station. He and uh -huh, then uh, the uh -huh. deputy mayor is uh, going to flag up the rally. So it's what uh, so seven eight uh, uh, Swargate uh, Jay Chok. Everybody be there. Yeah, sorry, uh, Jignesh, is it uh, seven a.m.? Seven. Seven a.m. Seven a.m. So the message, right official on. message, go from POS. MOS also. Yes, sir. I'm going to send them a flyer, yeah. and yeah. we'll be sharing a flyer also. Correct, correct. Ek bar, what the one fly, just share the details, na, ek bar. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, uh, Jignesh. I just tell you. From 7 to 8 a.m., we are starting yeah. the rally at Jede Chok uh, Swargate mm -hmm. uh, and will be flagged off by the Deputy Mayor Dr. Siddharth Dende and mm -hmm. the ACP of Swargate Police Station. 
मिस्टर किशोर राजनाटकर so they are they are going to be part of the uh, what we say the rally they are going to flag it off they will be with us and we are going to conclude the rally at the ima headquarters where we will have breakfast and then uh, this no more talks and on anything because it's a week day so time is absolutely uh, we are going to maintain from 7 to 8 so everybody be there official email and whatsapp and messages should go i am going to make a flyer we are going to share, uh, share with you and uh, pan maharashtra yes. Let uh, yes, Pune yes. be the torch bearer in this. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. Join for the rally. Thank you very definitely. much. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Just share the details. Thank you, Sanjay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank Sanjay. you, Doctor Gupta. Thank you, Doctor Gupta. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Doctor Gupta, sir. Bye, Doctor Gupta, sir. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Prasad, madam. Bye. Sashi, madam. Bye. Thank you, Doctor Sashi, ma'am. I think your academic questions were very nice. <laughs> to the point <laughs> chalo okay have a nice sunday bye कैसे लाइक कर रहा था इस